it down, I ain't going out. As the culture turns, you gotta figure it out. They see you getting it poppin', they gon' try and come around. I be down to go out like and keep a live round. In the flick, get you hit. Bitch, we gon' get you fired. Don't get caught up in the mix. Gotta ride with your blick. Uh, Fuck watching for the ops. It be the cops to get you hit. I just ride up off the porch. Mama said, stay up out the match. Niggas up when I was broke. They let me down on my dick. All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to. As the Culture Turners presents Jameer with the journalism. Now, before I get into the topic for today's episode, can you please make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you also hit that notification bell to stay updated with more content like this. All right, so today, the person who is on the docket for today is this person. Some of you may know her as Ice Spice. All right, so today, Ice Spice alleged former best friend tries to expose her for alleged colorism cheating and more so this is the best friend that's in question um she is an artist by the name of baby storm claiming to be her former best friend she accused her via twitter today saturday april 27 which is today so i'm reporting this as it went on of a whole lot of worrisome behavior statements and perspectives the main accusations, all of which are unconfirmed, is that she's a colorist. The allegations are unaddressed by Ice Spice at this time. So again, she exhibits or claims that she exhibits colorism and discrimination in her private life and that she tries to sabotage Storm's music career and switch her out for another best friend who goes by the name of Cleo Trapper, who she secretly hates. All right, so I did my research. I'm going to make sure that I show y'all this timeline of events that has been dropped on social media today by this former best friend of the name Baby Storm. All right, so first, I have the picture of her and Cleo Trapper. Now, again, there are accusations of her being colorist. The friend feels as though that Ice Spice used her to get certain connections within her music career because the other friend is a rapper. Cleo Trappa is also a rapper. She's on that show, Growing Up Hip Hop, on VH1. Um, and Sorry, not, not Growing Up Hip Hop, damn. The Impact New York. She's on The Impact New York that's on VH1, which is a show with different artists and influencers and different things like that. So this right here is Cleo Trappa, all right? She also alleged that she cheated on her producer and boyfriend, Riot USA, with Lil TJ. Now, if y'all notice in a lot of Ice Spice songs, she say in the beginning of her songs, stop playing with them, Riot. She said it like that. So he normally produces her songs, and some people even say that he writes her music or different things like that. Lil TJ, now let me show the picture of Lil Riot. <clears throat> so this is Riot right here. Um, a lot of people don't know or didn't know that they were dating, but it's been alleged for a long time that they've been dating. We don't know. We can't confirm that. So they are allegedly dating. All right. And Lil TJ, who I do not have a picture of, he and her did a song called Gangsta Boo. And she alleges that, again, she cheated on Ryan with Lil TJ when they were staying at the same house and she slept in Lil TJ bed. I'm trying to figure out how would, if, if I was Lil Ryan, my girl wouldn't be sleeping in another bed with another nigga if I'm in the same house, you know? But I digress. All right, so now let me go on. She also alleges that she made fun of Dolce's comments on colorism and shaded her. Now let me show a picture of Dolce real quick. Here go a picture of Dolce right here. All right, so Dolce is a rapper. She has that song, What It Is, featuring Kodak Black. She signed to the TBE label, which SZA is all signed to and is founded by Kendrick Lamar. So Dolce is a talented dark skinned rapper. All right. Okay. So now listen, of course, I know this all sounds like a lot, 
But I do want to make it clear that, again, these are all just accusations at the time that Ice Spice has not addressed yet. To attempt to back up many of her points, Baby Storm provided alleged text screenshots between them that suggest much of this behavior. These screenshots also included messages from Storm to Riot, which again is claiming that she cheated on him with Lil TJ. And many folks are debating the legitimacy of these claims online and whether or not they are enough to truly discredit her. All right, so now I'm going to pull up some of the stuff on the docket. But I also do want to make note that, I right, so before I get into all that, I want to pull up some of the things. So this popped up on the Neighborhood Talk today, and I actually got this from my Twitter page. So this was on her Twitter page, but I really first saw the story on the Neighborhood Talk, so I want to give them credit for that. But on here, I'm going to start from the bottom up. She said, the next person to be exposed will be my ex-best friend, Isis, who we all know as Ice Spice. And then the next one, she says, the people laughing at me now will be the same ones crying later. And then she proceeded to say, I've been quiet for too long. I will finally speak my truth. Now, prior to this Ice Spice news coming out, she's been on Twitter dragging a lot of different people within the industry, you know, dragging... Or saying things such as people are not as talented as her. She's not where she at because of like colorism and different things like that. So she's been on there. She's even dragged. Do I have the picture? Do I have the picture? Yeah. So um, she was dragging Lil Nas X. All right. So right here, Lil Nas X is wearing a dress and to Baby Stormy. Or, yeah, Baby Stormy, she feels, feels as though that Lil Nas actually trying to steal her style. I will play the clip of her music video towards the end of the show, but just remember this picture right here. She was dragging him, and right here she says, Lil Nas X, I'm not even going to dress you. You are another clown as Barb who tried to steal my identity. He stole my TCIAG, which stands for the city is a graveyard look that I invented. So this right here will make more sense once I show her video towards the end. And when you see the video, I personally do think that I guess he stole it. He was inspired by it. We can say that. All right. So now let's get into the accusations that she made upon Ice Spice and the other things that she alleged that Ice Spice said about Dolce, Riot, etc. All right. So first... I want to put this up right here. So she talked about how Isis did everything in her power to make sure my career would never take off. She did everything you could possibly think of and more, but I'm not afraid of her anymore. This is the truth. Then she proceeded to say, by the way, guys, don't worry about the hate. I'm getting because the only people hating on me are the barbs who I don't give a flying F about. Nicki Minaj is also evil and the barbs hating don't even know that Isis only used her for a feature. That's why she attacked Lotto. And then she proceeded to say that Lotto rose to fame because of her talent and talent only. Isis rose to fame because she sold her soul. She knew she would never have a fraction of the amount of talent Lotto has, but she attacked her on purpose to get a Nikki feature so the bars would turn on Lotto. It hurt her, and then she proceeded to say more. She was tweeting a lot, so I'll grab what I can because she was still loud tweeting as I was preparing for this episode. So that right there was um, some of the accusations. Now to address some of that, I feel like maybe it could be a little bit mm, truth to that strategy. She knew that Lotto and Nicki Minaj had a fallout previously. Therefore, in order to secure that Nicki Minaj collaboration, I'm pretty sure that she probably did play into, you know, not fooling with Lotto, you know, trying to get that bar fan base because people can say a lot of things about Nicki Minaj, but she does have a very loyal fan base and she is one of the most talented, if not the most talented current female rapper out there right now that's still dropping new music. So we can give that and it kind of worked for her because she did get that Nicki Minaj collaboration with the Princess Diana song which Nicki Minaj kind of did benefit from this song as well because it was originally 
I Spice song and Nicki Minaj hopped on a remix. However, this song did try high because I feel like mostly because of Nicki Minaj's fan base, The Barbs. All right, so that kind of did work out, but you know, it's now reported that they don't even get along anymore. And I believe that a lot because when Nicki Minaj performed at the MTV VMAs, she didn't do nothing with Ice Spice. She didn't bring Ice Spice out recently to her current concert. She brought out the girls on the, on the Super Free Girl remix. So there hasn't been any camaraderie between Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj lately. However, Ice Spice did get that feature. So maybe it worked out for the both of them. Who knows? All right. So I'm going to go back down. And then this right here. Uh, oh, sorry. No, those those are the comments right there. Um, where am I at? Sorry. All right. So this person right here. Now, a lot of people recognize her, which is Baby Storm. And a lot of people just feel like she's like some crazy unhinged person online. But Buffalo Butt said, I need y'all to look up Baby Storm. She is a disturbed young woman who claims the world is about to end and the only people saved will be poor people. She made a video telling people to leave the country and leave all their possessions to her. She claims she will personally pay for the poor people who wouldn't be able to leave the country. This girl is always in some foolishness. She is the chaos. So she has a history of being what some people would say like a conspiracy theorist. A lot of people think that she's unhinged. She's off her quote unquote meds and different things like that. So that's just a fair disclaimer. I don't want to discredit her, but I do want to put out what people have been saying about her. Okay. So now I do want to put up some of the social media comments because a lot of people have been reacting to this recent information that she put out. Okay. So before I get into that, these right here are some accusations that she made against Ice Spice not liking Cleo. So she put, I don't know Cleo's Twitter to tag her, but I know she'll see this. Cleo always knew Isis wasn't a real friend. She may not want to speak up now, but she knows, and Cleo is Nigerian as well. So again, Baby Stormy felt as though that Ice Spice replaced her with another dark skin girl who was Cleo Trapper. And then any screenshots, you probably can't see it, but to sum it up, they were texting, they were talking about getting Chick-fil-A. And then I Spice was telling the friend, Baby Stormy, so I'm getting all their names mixed up, Baby Stormy, to hurry up before Cleo come. Different things like that. It was a very little petty conversation. And again, these are all alleged. All right? So now I do want to put up some social media comments because a lot of people did react. And it was 50-50, I would say, for the most part. Or... I don't even want to say 50 50. A lot of people was against the best friend, the former best friend putting this stuff out. So, the first comment that I have, it says, and it's from Marjorie Royal. She says, I've fallen out with people, but the one thing I'll never do is expose them. If you were fine with it while her, fine with it while her friend, don't be mad now that y'all aren't. Hmm, okay. Next. It says, be mad all you want, but telling my man I cheated, let's box. And that was from Dira, Dira the Fendal. Next, it says, if she hates star skin people, why were you ever her BFF? LOL. That was from Phenomenally Her. And Adonis Big Don said, I know a hater when I see one, because now. I'm all these things when we fall out. Please save it. And Dub Dior says, I'm sorry, nothing she said is colorist. Light-skinned people can't say dark skin or something with the laughing emoji. So a lot of people are not really believing her. They feel as though that there must have been a fallout or something along those lines where she is now saying stuff as to previously being quiet about all of these allegations she made about Ice Spice today. All right, so then Cleo Trapper did, I'm not Cleo Trapper, Baby Stormy, did go on social media because a lot of people were saying, but you was accepting this, so why are you only saying something up now? Just, that's what it's pretty much saying. I can't see the rest of the tweet. But Baby Stormy replied and said, because unfortunately, I thought she was a real friend. I've known her since we were 13. We went to the same grade school and high school. 
Sacred Heart in Yonkers, New York. We met in eighth grade. She was my high school bully. I forgave her after high school because she apologized for bullying me. She only tried to be kindled with me when I started doing music and got some motion. She used my connections and resources to make her way to the top and pretended to be my friend. She forced everyone in her life to sign an NDA, including me. But the only person I'm signed to is God, so I will speak the truth. So that was her responding to someone who was basically asking her, well, why now? So again, a lot of this is alleged. We're going to just go off of what was being said about the colorism situation or whatever. Now, I do want to give just a couple um, opinions on the whole colorism thing. Now, while I cannot confirm whether she's colorist or not, I do want to say that I do feel like Ice Spice benefited off of colorism. And when I say that, I do feel like because she is a super light-skinned woman, she's light-skinned as light-skinned as light-skinned can be. I do feel as though that because she is light-skinned, she was able to propel herself to the top way faster than other people who may have been working hard or working prior to her. A lot of people were upset at one point about she getting more recognition than Flo Millie. Flo Millie is a talented, dark-skinned, beautiful rapper who is now getting the recognition where her song Never Lose Me. But prior to Never Lose Me, she has never tried on Billboard and she was actually putting out way more music before Ice Spice and Ice Spice was actually getting the recognition before someone like a Flo Millie. So I do feel like Ice Spice career could have benefited from a couple things. It could have benefited from her being light-skinned. I do feel like she has a great team, so I feel like her team knows how to market her. And I also just feel like she aligned with the right people. She had co-signed some like Drake, Nicki Minaj, Taylor Swift, so she was able to be propelled into a superstardom faster than other upcoming rappers who I believe have way more talent than Ice Spice. You know, not to degrade her. I respect her hustle. I feel like she does have a couple bops that, you know, I thought was nice, but I just feel like her overall as an artist, she would not have made it in the 1990s back when Lil' Kim, Eve, Foxy Brown, Remy Ma, when all those people was coming up, Missy Elliott, she would not have made it, in my opinion, during that time but nowadays a lot of the music is mediocre nowadays so i do think that there is some truth to her benefiting from colorism now i want to bring up um because she did a cover story with teen vogue last summer june of last summer in 2023 ice spice addressed remarks about her complexion and fame saying that people's opinions are not something personal to her she also said that Colorism conversations were being had since the beginning of time. I have seen those opinions. She said about critics' thoughts on her success. This is her quote. I feel like that's not something personal to me. I feel like that's been in the conversation for generations and forever since the beginning of time. I try not to feed into negativity because I also see that when people are trying to make that point, it's not out of a good place they end up putting somebody else down. So that was her addressing the colorism allegations placed upon her last summer. It wasn't about her necessarily being a colorist, but her benefiting because she's a light-skinned woman. Now, I do have a little bit more thoughts on Ice Spice. Now, when it comes to Ice Spice, do I think she's a colorist? Again, I cannot confirm or deny that. I can. If those text messages are true because she has some text messages calling the black community the Shea Butter community. We don't know if that's really Ice Spice or not because this girl has a reputation of being unhinged and everything I said in the beginning. So saying she's a colorist, I don't quite know. But again, as I stated, I do feel like she benefited from colorism. Colorism is when you can be light-skinned, or even white privilege, but there's a colorism privilege as well. Light skin, and you don't have to be as talented. As long as you got the look, as long as you're marketable, as long as you are likable, I think that you can benefit from that. For example, Ice Spice was invited to the Matt Gala 
after only being out for like a year or maybe, you know, yeah, for about a year, you know, and the Met Gala is something that people get invited to after being out for a while. It's normally like a lot of A-list celebrities there and for her to be out only a year, she was invited there, you know, she also was able to get a collaboration with Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, to my recollection, never really worked with a female rapper before. And this is the first one that she works with, Ice Spice. And I do feel like, again, a lot of this is a combination of Ice Spice having a brilliant team. I do feel like she has a great team. They know how to market her well. But then, you know, I guess it kind of makes sense to work with, in my opinion, another subpar artist. Even though Taylor Swift sells a lot of music, I'm not really into a lot of Taylor Swift music, but she was able to snag the Taylor Swift collaboration after she did that Nicki Minaj collaboration. So she aligned herself with the A-listers to be able to become an A-list. And again, I don't feel like she has the talent as someone like a Nicki Minaj. Some people will say a Taylor Swift. I don't feel like she has that talent. However, her not having the talent, I do feel like she was more marketable. It was more of a look thing, more of a trendy moment thing as opposed to her being actually talented because I think I only heard the Karma song once with Ice Spice and I don't even remember it but I remember it being trash at least the version with Ice Spice because it just didn't make sense I didn't understand it I don't know why it happened yeah now also I want to bring up the fact that when it comes to Ice Spice she was able to surpass way more talented female rappers, in my opinion, success-wise, whether it was Coyle Ray, Coyle Ray, who I think is way more talented than Ice Spice. I feel like she's more of an artist than Ice Spice would ever be. She actually has the look, but for some reason, and she has the stage presence, and she has the performance element that I feel like Ice Spice does not even have the capacity, not even a quarter of what Coyle Ray can do. Another one, Lola Brooke. I feel like Lola Brooke is way more talented than Ice Spice. I like the pl Don't Play With a Song. She put out a great song with Bryson Tiller called You. And she put out another good song called Just Relax. But a lot of those songs did not do good. And I don't understand why it didn't do good because those three songs alone from Lola Brooke was, I would say, better than most of Ice Spice discography. I do like, you know, She and Her Mood. I feel like that's a nice song. Princess Diana was a nice song with or without Nicki Minaj. And I guess Munch was catchy as well. But when it comes to song like Think You the Sh, but you're not even the fart, like what? It's funny I said like what? And I think that she say that. But that song, um, for me, it just feel like Ice Spice makes the same song over and over and over again. Her her production does not really change much. I feel like whoever is producing her songs, Lil Riot, I feel like he probably take a couple drums off the song and then make a new beat. He might add some violins to one song and then it's like a new beat. Um, he might add some guitar to a different song, a different beat, and it just all feel like the same beat, but it's slightly different. All of her music sounds the same. She makes the same song over and over and over again. However, people such as Megan Thee Stallion or a Glorilla would get the accusations of them not switching their flow up. They always sound the same. And I actually think that's far from the truth because Glorilla and Megan Thee Stallion actually do switch up their flow and they give versatility. I do not feel like Ice Spice gave versatility. I don't want to feel like I'm a hater because I feel like she has catchy music. I feel like a certain generation will understand Ice Spice. And I do feel like she has a very interesting look. Her look is very interesting, especially when she came out with the little curly wig. I guess that was a wig, the little orange wig or whatever, the little Annie look. Like she had a very interesting look. So that's the one thing that I would give Ice Spice in regards to that. Now, to back up more claims, I definitely do want to also say that when it comes to her live performance, Ice Spice lack live performance. She cannot perform live well, in my opinion. She cannot perform live. She literally just gives a little two-step and she, do, she does stuff like this. I feel like her gimmick is her twerking. Like, that's her gimmick. She twerks and then the crowd gets hyped. But when she's performing, they're not really hype. They just, like, vibe into the song or whatever. And, again, she make catchy music. But I feel like the crowd only really get into her 
is when she's twerking like this. I'm gonna put it back up. All right. And y'all know this is Jameer with the journalism. So what I like to do, I like to do my research and I got three exhibits, three exhibits for y'all that I'm going to put on the screen so y'all can see. Now, these are three different performances of Ice Spice at different events. One was Powerhouse. One was her on tour with Doja Cat and Dochi. And then the other one was Coachella. Now, I had to remove the music so I do not get copyrighted. So the music behind will be different, but you're going to see her live performance. So here go Exhibit A. So again, right there, she did a little two-step, a little yin yin. You know, she didn't really do much. She just kind of stood there. Didn't really have no backup dancers there. Didn't really have much energy. She was just walking across, back and forth across the stage, just lip singing to the music, just as Betty Boop with her whole ass out. And listen, that's your gimmick. I ain't gonna hate. However, I do feel like that is her gimmick. I don't feel like she has the talent. I feel like her gimmick is the talent. Next exhibit, exhibit two, or exhibit B. Exhibit B, you see her in that performance. She has a couple background dancers. They are dancing. They are doing the routine that they were taught by a choreographer. And you see her just kind of swaying back and forth across the stage, you know, lip singing to the microphone again. And then she's, you know, turns around and do a little twerk. You know, that's like her signature move when the crowd is kind of just like sitting there, kind of looking at her like, paint drawn on the wall she turns around she starts twerking and everybody start clapping and getting excited and like oh you know so that was exhibit b now exhibit c exhibit c another clear performance of her literally having background dancers who's doing the boom cat boom cat cat like they doing the routine they busting it down in the background and she just again swaying across the stage floating over there like she on a cloud and then again she proceeds to turn around and then she does a twerk so again that's her gimmick that's her talent i can't be mad at it but it's the truth i don't feel like she's talented in the way that garnered her the success that she has because she also got a star on road with denzel washington on a movie for her debut acting role. Denzel Washington is such a huge actor, especially in the black community. And that's her debut role. So again, this could be a mixture of her having a good team, but also using her gimmick as her talent. That is what's going on in my opinion. All right. So again, I will continue to follow this story. There are more of these going on as I even record this episode, but I wanted to put it out there. I also want to, again, highly encourage y'all to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Jermir with the three underscores. So you can also follow the podcast brand as The Culture Turns. Now, this has been Jermir with the journalism, and you know I do my research. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. I got to show the video of Old Girl. What's her name? Oh, I keep, her name ain't even memorable to me. Um... Her name, Baby Storm. So this is a video of Baby Storm. And this would make sense with the whole little Nas X piece that I said in the beginning. She has a song called The City is a Graveyard. We will write and see how we like the song. And then we will wrap up. The city is a graveyard.
thoughts and opinion on it. Now, this may be an unpopular opinion. I don't really hate it. It ain't my genre of music of interest. I probably wouldn't go cut it on. I do feel like it's a very interesting song. I feel like she has more talent than Ice Spice. I feel like she's very unique. It gives more of a alternative type of vibe. I kind of understand the concept. I like the fact that she's in the graveyard and then she's talking about the city as a graveyard as in like the city is dead. It's, you know, full of soulless people or whatever the case may be. I understand what she was trying to do. I feel like there may be a little bit of talent there. Again, she may be affected by the whole colorism thing. We don't know. But that was her song. She said that Ice Spice has been trying hard to discredit her and not get her, you know, when she got big, she kind of left her alone but used all her connections. So that was her song right there. I just wanted to put that towards the end of the video. Now, again, this has been Jameer with the journalism. You know I did my research. And there may be a part two to this video if old girl keep on tweeting. Other than that, again, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And please, again, hit that notification bell and follow me on Instagram or social media at Jameer or at Ask the Culture Turns.